Let's head to the Middle East. There's a large desert here, and it's completely dark, except for one spot. It's a big circle that glows with a bright orange light. The Darvaza Crater. And it's just a giant gas burner. Years ago, geologists found gas here, and they started mining for it. But when they excavated, they came across a void underground. The void collapsed, and it formed a crater. It's as wide as half a soccer field, and as deep as a five-story building. Gas began to come out of the cracks in the crater, and since animals were often grazing near this place, the geologists decided to set these gas streams on fire to exhaust the source. Geologists thought the fire would be over in a day or two, but if you come here now, you'll see this gateway to the underworld is still burning, and it's been going on for almost 50 years. In 2013, a man descended to the bottom of the burning crater for the first time. He collected many different samples there, and scientists were able to find bacteria that aren't found anywhere else on Earth. They're quite comfortable at the bottom of this endless burning frying pan. In 2009, a man in L'Aquila, Italy, saw flickering lights dancing above the stone street. He immediately knew what to do and moved his family to a safer place. Only seconds later, a massive 8.3 magnitude earthquake hit the whole region. His knowledge of the strange lights saved his and his family's lives. So what are those mysterious warnings? For centuries, people interpreted the lights as something otherworldly. The scientific community didn't take them seriously, just put them down to a false recollection, a mind trick, or pure imagination. With the introduction of surveillance cameras and smartphones, the amount of evidence grew enormously. Now the connection was obvious. Lights appear and an earthquake hits. So, experts finally started taking it seriously and started digging for the truth. But after years of research, to this day, geologists are still not fully sure what the source of the lights is. But they have recognized five types of them. Bright flashes that light up the sky, looking like storm lightning or a strong camera flash rays in the sky that can look like light columns, different sized flames that come through the ground, diffused glows over the mountains, and slow moving balls of light that can be misinterpreted as ball lightning. Another equally little understood atmospheric phenomenon, these are literal balls of lightning that can float and explode, leaving a sulfuric odor behind. But unlike ball lightning, these spherical EQLs seem to be harmless, if you don't count what's coming afterward. But with all these types of lights, experts can't know how exactly they're connected to earthquakes. They don't only show up before one hits. Some have been reported during and after earthquakes. They can also appear with other phenomena, like meteorite crashes, volcanic eruptions, or auroras. For now, Scientists can only come up with theories to explain the unexplainable. One of the recent ones claimed the lights were electric lines being broken during an earthquake. But this theory doesn't explain how the phenomena was observed hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Like the ancient Chinese tale of dragon-looking clouds appearing in the sky as a warning of an upcoming quake. Or how an ancient Roman historian reported huge flame-like lights bursting out just before a huge earthquake occurred. The electric line theory was quickly dismissed. Another theory suggested it was escaping gas. During an earthquake, the underground rocks expand and shrink under pressure and heat. This opens and closes small spaces between them. Different gases make their way through these new openings. Radon, for example, can get released during seismic activity. It can ionize the air, making it electrically charged. But radon doesn't do it enough to create bright sparks of light. This theory is close, but doesn't quite hit the mark. One of the most accepted theories is that it might be from electricity traveling up from underground. When underground igneous rocks, ones that form from magma deep within the Earth, are under stress, they release ionized, or electrically charged, oxygen. It travels through the surface and up into the atmosphere, where it creates a localized electric field. That can produce brief flashes of visible light. Some aren't even that quick and can go on for minutes at a time. So 
There you are. You've been driving for hours through the night. You didn't have any chance to sleep, so your mind is hanging by a thread. You stop the car and go out to stretch your limbs. And then, you look up into the sky and see a beautiful sunrise. Whoa, wait! There are three suns in the sky! You rub your eyes, but nope. There are still three bright stars in the sky. No, our home star hasn't been torn into three pieces, nor has it been visited by two other stars. This is called a sun dog. It occurs mostly during severe frosts. Small ice crystals in the sky bend the light. As a result, you may see three bright spots in the sky instead of just one. This phenomenon is officially called a halo. Usually, it's just a circle around the sun. You can even see a halo at night, too. Just look at a street lamp, and you'll see a bright circle around it. Sometimes, a halo can take on a fancier shape. If there's a lot of ice in the air, the light is warped even more. Just like in a room with a dozen mirrors. Then, the halo can take on the shape of a human eye. Because of this phenomenon, a false dawn can occur, too. While you're looking at the horizon, the dawn begins, and the edge of the sun appears. A little bit more, and wait, the sun starts to just dissolve in the sky. After a few moments, it's dark again. And only a minute later, the real sun shows its face. It was the same light curvature effect you saw before with the three suns. Only now, the light is curved vertically, not horizontally. And instead of the real sun, its reflection in ice crystals in the sky appeared. And now moving on. This cloud looks like a dinosaur, and this one looks like a cat. And this, whoa, it looks like these clouds are falling down. Oh, phew, that's just a mammatus cloud. Their shape really makes them look like chunks of cloud about to slam on the ground. Well, that's not going to happen, but you better start seeking cover anyway. Such clouds are a sign of a severe thunderstorm coming. It takes a lot of moist air with ice crystals at the top and dry air at the bottom to create such clouds. Then, vertical currents of air appear between these layers. And these currents make the clouds take the shape of a human brain. <laughs> and this giant cloud looks like a dome that's going to cover an entire city. In fact, that's exactly what happens. A huge cloud covers a large area and then rains heavily on it. Sometimes, the front of such a cloud takes a bizarre shape, like in these pictures. It looks more like several giant spaghetti clouds, or even giant cloud worms. This phenomenon can often be seen in Australia, and it's called morning glory. It happens because a strong wind twists part of the cloud on both sides. And then, the huge sheet of air dough splits into thick strips. And sometimes, you can see clouds in the sky made of birds. Wow, that cloud moves quickly and changes shape. It becomes more transparent, but then denser and darker again. The birds seem to be involved in some kind of dance or performance. But they're not doing it for beauty or for the crowds of spectators gathered below. They're doing it for protection. When birds group themselves into such a cloud, they intimidate birds of prey. An eagle or hawk would have a hard time picking out a single target among the endless number of birds. And they move quickly, covering each other. Fish are huddled together in schools in the same way. Such a cloud might just spook a hungry predator. Grab some sunglasses and you're good to go. This phenomenon lasts around 40 minutes. These clouds are the same ones that can cause a spooky ring around the moon at night sometimes. Nature sends early signs of disasters in many different ways. J-shaped trees might mean there's a landslide coming. Since the ground is moving slowly, the trees grow into this super selfieable shape. Try to find a flat area and avoid going near any trees unless you have superhuman strength. Another mystical phenomenon can be seen in the desert. A sand waterfall. When the wind brings a lot of sand to the edge of the canyon, it begins to fall down. Now amplify this effect 100 times and you get a sand waterfall in Saudi Arabia. It's really like Niagara Falls, only there's not a drop of water. The locals say this phenomenon warns of an impending sandstorm. <laughs>